Some of you guys might have a big tire on their SUV, on their cars, like a 22 inch rims, but this is the real deal. This is the world's biggest tire ever. With me is Eric from Goodyear. Eric, hi, nice hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So that's the world's biggest tires? Yes, it is. This is the Goodyear RM4A Plus. It's a 5980. R63, RM4A+. What that means is 63, the last number in that nomenclature, is 63 inches, meaning the inside diameter of that rim is five foot three inches tall. And the overall diameter, like you said, is over 13 feet tall, or, or four meters. What is the application for this size of tire? Okay, so this tire would go on the uh, large, ultra-large hauling trucks for mining, like the 400 ton uh, Cat or Komatsu or Liebherr trucks. Uh, the tire was designed initially for the oil sands application on 400 ton trucks in Alberta, Canada, where they make the oil out of the sand. They basically mine the oil. And that's what we originally designed the RM4A plus uh, 4 and the RM3A. Uh, and now the tire would go on any, any 400 ton hauler hauling coal, iron ore, copper, gold, um, they're used in several applications all over the world. This tire is running today on uh, four continents currently, so it's a very, very popular size. So when developing such a tire, what are the challenges? Like what, what targets do you have to meet? Well, the, that's, that's a great question. The key to, to the tire being this big is to be able not only to carry that massive load, that 400 tons, but it's also got to be able to run cool enough to withstand the, the speeds and the cycle distances, but, but still run cool. But then you also want to make sure that the tire can withstand the severe underfoot. So the, you know, these trucks are running on some tough underfoot environments sometimes. So cutting and spinning and water and all of these different um, conditions that this tire has to go through. So it has to stay cool, run cool, but it also has to protect itself against those, those severe environments. When you talk about like staying cool, yeah. what does that mean? Okay, so staying cool, unlike you, know, you and I trying to stay cool, when this tire is running under those extreme speeds and those extreme loads, you can see in the sidewall, it, it flexes a lot. And we're talking 400 tons on this truck. Each tire is carrying 100 metric tons. So it obviously, as it's going through its cycle over and over, it's, it's generating a, a lot of energy and that energy creates a lot of heat. And that heat builds up in this very thick rubber. So the key is to get that heat out of the tire and cool itself. So that's why we build in all of these different lugs and voids to create additional surface area to allow that heat to escape. So what is the regular uh, normal operating temperature? Every one of these tires has a certain rating. So it's, it's rated to carry a certain amount of weight at a certain speed for a certain time. So we call that ton kilometer per hour, which is a kind of a unit of energy or a unit of power. Every tire, based on the tread compound and the tread pattern, has different TKPH. So if you want a tire to run as cool as possible, you need a tire with the highest possible TKPH, meaning it can carry the most load the fastest. You don't want this tire to get too much hotter internally than about 100C. So 100C is kind of our critical temperature that we try to stay under, and that's where we, that's where we measure from to find out the tire's TKPH rating. Actually, when I buy tires for my car, I can choose like between winter and summer tires. Right. And right. Right now, I understand that the secret uh, lies in the different compounds. So, it does, it does. So you not only have like winter or summer tires, you have like a, lots of different uh, right. configurations. So it's a little different than your passenger scenario. Ambient temperature does play a part. And for you, on your car, you, you'll replace your summer tires with winter tires. And a lot of, the, a lot of what you're trying to gain is traction, so that the pattern will be much different, so that the tire will bite on the snow and the icy conditions. For us, ambient temperature does play a factor, but it's not as much of a factor as, as, the, as the pattern itself. Ambient temperature for us, um, obviously, if you're running in Australia and you're in the Pilbara region and the, the temperature outside is a, you know, 45 C versus uh, in the wintertime, it might be 
10 or, or 12 or 15 C. That's a big swing. And it does make an, it, it has an impact on the tire. So like you said, the secret for us is in the compounding. We've got over, I think we have four or five different tread compounds that we can apply based on not only the ambient temperature, but the running conditions. So this, for example, this compound here might be a much cooler running compound. So that's good for high ambient temperature, high speeds, heavy loads. But we also have this exact same tire that we would apply a different tread and it might be, it might run maybe not so cool, but it will provide a additional cut and wear protection. So similar to like what you're trying to find in your, in your automobile where you're trying to find that, that balance between traction and, and safe driving in those severe conditions, we're doing the same thing with compounding, but more for a, from a heat buildup perspective. When I think like 40 years, 50 years ago, yeah. like when you see such big tires, I mean not, not that big tires, but like right. the biggest one you could get, right. uh, they always were on operation like with tire chains. Yep. You don't see that so often now, yeah, nowadays. I I think you're right. Tire chains, I think the evolution of tire compounds has, has played a big part. Um, like I was saying, the compound technology today has improved so much that the tires provide, they kind of provide their own protection, right? So there, there is still a need, there's still a niche for chains in, in very, very severe conditions where the rock is very sharp and the cutting is very, very bad. There's still uh, a use for chains, especially on loader applications. But in a lot of the haulage tires, I think the rubber compounding has gotten to the point where um, the tires have enough of their own cut protection and penetration protection that you really have kind of seen the use of chains slowly go away in large haulage. I, I've only ever been to one or two mine sites globally in the world where I've seen chains on large haulage truck tires. And most of that was because of um, snow and icy conditions, they were just looking for additional traction more than anything. And spin and cut protection, but mostly traction. Now when I come back to my car, I, I just recently needed one new tire. Okay. And I had like 250 bucks on the bill. Uh, you got uh, a deal. I probably got a deal, but what about this? Uh, the, this tire here, it's funny, we were talking earlier about the global tire shortage and how much these tires were, I mean, you couldn't, you could not find these tires anywhere in the world. Um, there was a worldwide shortage for large haulage and prices were getting ridiculous. You, you know, I was seeing on the internet out, it was like this, this internet market that was created and these tires were going, you know, over a hundred thousand US dollars a piece. Like a black market for tires. It huh? was, it was crazy. <laughs> um, but now I, you know, the, the market has kind of stabilized. There's, there's, um, plenty of uh, manufacturers now with uh, capacity of these tires and the market is kind of leveled off. It's, it's probably in the you know, mid $50,000 US dollar range right now. But yeah, compared to the, the tire you replaced on your car, you could, you could buy uh, quite a few of those for the price of one of these babies right here. Last but not least, what is around the global market for this uh, size of tires? Well, the global market today is, is strong. Uh, there are several manufacturers, OEM manufacturers, producing this size truck. We talked about Caterpillar, obviously, Komatsu, um, Liebherr, we talked about earlier. Um, so the market is strong. Uh, like I said, we're selling these tires on four continents today in Latin America, the US, Canada. The market is, you know, it's a growing market size, I think, this size truck is ever increasing in popularity. So I, I feel pretty good about this market today. It's anytime soon, I don't see it going a whole lot bigger. Um, the, mining, the mining roads are not ready for a bigger truck. Even to transport this tire is very, very difficult. So I don't see it going much bigger. So I see the market for this tire uh, being around for a, a long time to come, for sure. Okay, thanks Eric. All right, thank you. For all the information. All right. Well, as you can see, there's a lot more than just the four meter uh, in size. There's so much complexity, so much almost rocket science within a tire. And that is the biggest tire in the world.
Bauforum24 TV Construction in Motion